Hi, this is David Maloney from Small Business Planned. Today I'm going to talk about using layers, or more specifically, how using layers can help you create artwork quicker and more easily. But first, what are layers? Well, it's best to describe layers as a thin invisible sheet which hold any element within your artwork. All elements that rest on this thin sheet can be edited together as one and independent of any other elements on your artwork. By using layers, it's simpler to create and edit your artwork and you have more control. So let's have a look at an example. Here's how layers work. With a traditional image such as say a JPEG or a GIF, you're met with a flattened image like the small business plan logo. Whereas with layered artwork, individual elements within the artwork are all separated from one another. This allows you to focus on one particular element within your artwork, say the icon, for instance, or the word small, and independently edit this, either by making it larger, smaller, or changing its contrast, or even cropping it slightly. And this can all be done independent of any other element in your artwork. So as you can imagine, there are many benefits to using layers. These include simplifying the arrangement process, so you can grab a layer and move it around with ease. It also allows you to individually edit layers without contaminating other layers on the page. And you can also target individual layers to either darken them or lighten them without uh, contaminating other layers. And you can also choose a layer to resize without resizing the other layers. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Let's jump into paint.net to show you what I mean. So we're here in paint.net and I've just opened up a simple image of some children uh, in colorful silhouettes. Now, as shown on the layers tab, this only has one layer, which is called background. This means that if I use the selector tool and start clicking and say selecting these two children here and moving them, the whole layer is moved across. And if I drop and deselect, I can't move the layer back without impacting the previous children which used to be behind them. So if I click and drag, I've physically overridden the children which used to be in the middle. Now, this isn't a good move. Also, you'll note that there's a checkerboard effect. This checkerboard effect indicates that you've reached the bottom of your canvas. It's more of a visual guide to yourself. If, for instance, I was looking to save this picture, that checkerboard effect would just come up as white. So don't think that the checkerboard will come up in your final artwork. What I'm going to do is undo all those changes, Control Z, and I'm back to our original artwork. Now to demonstrate the power of layers, I'm just going to switch to a paint.net artwork file, which has this exact picture only in layered format. In switching to this file, you'll note that there isn't actually any change to the image itself. However, there are a number of layers that are suddenly available on the layers palette. You'll notice that every child has a layer. So, for instance, I can select the pink girl who is right at the top and I can choose to make her invisible by unchecking her and she disappears from the canvas or I can make her reappear or I can make her and be positioned behind the red boy by clicking on the down arrow here, signifying move layer down. So if you look at the pink girl, she's now behind the red boy. Likewise, if I select the yellow boy and move the layer boy down, he is behind the purple boy. And I can also do the same with the green girl. I can also choose to remove a layer so if, for instance, I no longer require the green girl, I simply click on the X and she disappears. I can also choose to duplicate a layer. So if, for instance, I like the look of the red boy, I click on the layer and I click this button here, duplicate layer, 
and it creates a duplicate layer, which appears in the exact position of the original layer. Now, after I create a duplicate layer, it's a good idea to double click on the name and change it. So for simplicity, I will just call it Red Boy 2. And this will avoid any confusion. I then make sure I have Red Boy 2 selected and then simply move him across to where I'd like him. To create a new layer, simply click on the Add New Layer button. Then as usual, double click on the layer and make a name for it. I'll just call mine Rectangle. And OK. Now you're free to create a shape. I'll just change mine to make a filled shape. Um, blue and blue looks good. Then click and draw. And I've got a new shape. Which I'll just move so it's slightly centered. I can then choose to move my rectangle behind my existing layers by clicking the down button. You'll see that one by one, the layers are brought to the fore. Hiding my rectangle for a moment, I will show you how to merge layers. Simply click on the layer you wish to merge and ensure the layer you wish to merge it with is underneath it. Clicking on the top layer, click this button here, which is Merge Layer Down, and you will see that I will merge the purple boy with the yellow boy. This means that when I move this layer around, both boys are moved. And that's the basics of layers. For more tips, check out my website at smallbusinessplanned.com.